Hey, this is Bryce from Jacket Trades. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we just got done doing some phenomenal speed runs with our Tamiya lunchbox for the speed run for the speed run challenge, um, and I went ahead and tore into the gearbox um, because I wanted to change out the gearing on it so we could get even faster speeds. Maybe maybe even the 60s. That's what we're going for. Um, but I wanted to do a quick video, kind of a peek into the inside of this gearbox and some of the design features that I built into it and what we're going to do with the gearing and how we can get faster. So uh, let's change, flip the camera around and look into it. Thanks. All right, so we're going to take a peek inside of a 50 mile an hour Tamiya Lunchbox gearbox. Um, here's the original Tamiya Lunchbox gearbox. Um, it has somewhat limited gearing that you can do with it because everything's uh, wedged in there pretty good. Um, this is actually screwed shut so I can't open it. Um, so what I wanted to do on this gearbox and the design uh, is I wanted to give myself a, lar a wide range of gears I could play with, starting from low to high. Um, I got, I, I, I reinforce the swing axle pivot um, and then I actually support my pivot with bearings. Uh, so it's not free to roll anymore, it's fixed, it just swings. So it only has one degree of freedom versus two as the um, original gearbox has. I reinforced the uh, shock mounts and I put the shocks in double shear um, so that they're supported and you're not putting, uh, you're kind of spreading out the stresses on the shock mounts. Um, what else did I do? This is a much wider, well, not much. I increased the width. Actually, this gearbox is stock. Sorry, I have another design that's 30 millimeters wider. Um, but this uses the stock axle, so it's a stock width. Um, the other thing in playing around with the gearing. Uh, I basically was forced to go with bigger gears to get so I could, I could have the variety that I wanted. And so what I tried to do was push the motor back towards the front of the vehicle um, and flatten it out a little bit. Um, so you can kind of see how, to me, a lunchbox, the gears are kind of stacked up. Um, in my lunch, in my gearbox, they're laid out a little more flat with the motor towards the front of the vehicle. So let's have a look inside. One of the reasons I actually have it apart right now, having just done my runs for 55 miles an hour, is I have um, exhausted the capabilities of this gearing and the motor that I'm running. So I need to swap out the gears for taller gears so I can try to go a little bit faster. Let's pop this open and see what's going on inside. Oh, let's see here. One of these shafts probably has a burn, so it's not coming out. All right. There's not much to it to me, a lunchbox gearbox. It's basically three gears, your pinion gear, your um, counter gear, and your differential gear. Um, there's the inside of this half of the gearbox. And this is the other half. Um, in my case, I don't run a differential. I am running a, um, well, that's interesting. <laughs> in my case, I'm not running a differential. I'm running a locker, um, so there are no diff there are no, what do you call them, planetary gears in some way. Okay, so I think what's weird is that this thing kind of fell apart. Um, it probably didn't fell, it probably, well, it fell apart probably during assembly. Um, that thing, the pin was just floating in there. The only thing that pin does is it, it keeps these, um, well, it actually doesn't have a lot of functionality because the, um, once you put these cross pins in your axle, your shafts, your drive shafts can't move inside. Um, so I'd probably leave it out going forward. Um, there's like a little burr in this cross hole. It's causing that grief. All right, so one of the challenges with these gearboxes is, is the gears tend to run into the adjacent um, shaft. So in this case, you can see here this gear, the counter gear, is very close to the drive shaft. Um, so I can't go any bigger on this counter gear, but I don't really want to because going bigger is lower gearing, it makes me go slower. So the next step is to make this gear smaller and the pinion bigger and I'll get a little faster. The other challenge with this gearbox is this part of the counter gear, which engages the differential, um, that gear wants to run into the motor, right? Um, so the motor goes right here, and you have this gear right here. Um, so those, you know, getting those to clear each other without hitting, because, you know, 
Ideally, you would want to make this gear bigger and your difference of, small, difference of your smaller um, to get taller gearing, but you're limited in how um, how big you can make this because it starts to interfere with the motor in this gearbox design. Actually, in the lunchbox gearbox, gearbox design. So there, there's these constraints and you're constantly fighting those constraints to find good ratios that'll work um, for what you're trying to do. So this gearbox is, has been optimized so it has a pretty good range of gearing. Um, my 55 mile an hour run was basically done on one of the lowest gearings that I could set up for this gearbox. So now I can only go up from there. Um, so let's find the new gears that go in here. All right, so I have a couple of options for gears. Um, because I want to go faster, I want to go with a smaller spur gear. Um, all of the three of these gears have the same um, counter gear that engages with the diff, because I don't want to change the diff gearing at all. Um, but they have different spur gear sizes. Um, in my gearbox, I basically have a fixed location for the motor. I, I don't have an adjustable motor mount. Um, I thought it would be easier just to not mess around with moving the motor and trying to set the mesh and having things slip on you. Um, so I, I, the motor's fixed. Um, and if I want to change the gear ratios, I basically change the pinion and the spur. Um, and in my gearbox, the sum of the spur and the pinion need to add up to 80. So uh, this is the gear that I use for 55 miles an hour. Um, it's 64 tooth spur um, with a 28 tooth uh, counter. Um, that means I'm running a 16 tooth pinion. Um, the next gear that I want to go up to is a 62 tooth spur. So smaller spur, bigger pinion gives you more speed. So I'm going to go 62 tooth spur with an 18 tooth pinion. And that's a 16% increase in um, uh, taller gearing, which means I should be hitting around 63, 64 miles an hour with this gear set. Um, <clears throat> and then the next one up from there is a 60 tooth uh, pinion, 20 tooth spur. Um, and I haven't done the number calculation for those speeds, but it's super fast. At this point, I would be happy if I could get into the 60s. Uh, that would be, I don't know. Uh, I would like to believe that that's untouchable, but um, <laughs> we'll see. I'm sure there's, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing anything crazy special here. So there's always someone out there that's faster than you. Um, but for me, that would be, that would be a big achievement to get into the 60s. So we're going to install this gear um, tonight. Um, and then we'll get it back together and we'll um, do some runs tomorrow and see how we do. Uh, thanks for watching.